Thank you very much. Uh, uh, good afternoon to everyone. It's a real pleasure to be here uh, at uh, ODI. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the organizers of this event. Uh, this is a great opportunity for uh, the international uh, community, and particularly the Inter-America Development Bank share uh, some of the finding of our research. Uh, the, the research uh, focus on uh, the tax system in Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, and also make comparisons uh, across other regions, uh, and particularly uh, comparison with uh, OECD countries. Uh, that was the standard that we looked for. Uh, it was a, uh, a work uh, that lasted approximately 18 months, uh, uh, two years. Uh, and we tried to cover uh, the macro aspect of the taxation system, and then uh, went into more details in terms of the uh, tax by tax, uh, uh, the, the structure of the taxation in, in, in the region. <coughs> uh, the objective here was uh, go beyond uh, uh, just uh, focuses on, on revenue. The objective was to try to find uh, where are the gaps uh, for uh, other uh, objectives uh, that the institutions uh, pursue, particularly whether the taxation system can help uh, to fight inequality, uh, to promote productivity, uh, and to protect uh, uh, the future. Uh, obviously, in this presentation, I'm not going to cover everything that is in the book, but I would like to highlight uh, some aspects uh, that I think uh, are relevant uh, for the discussion. And we'll focus on, on in general, two aspects. One, uh, in the characterization of the taxation system and the myth of the reality uh, of, the, of the system in, in lack, and then conclude with some uh, essentials, essentials and policy recommendations. Three uh, characteristics uh, are often uh, mentioned that define uh, the taxation system in Latin America and the Caribbean. One, that the tax burden is low. Two, that taxes are regressive. And three, that there is a large uh, evasion. And what we want to see in the analysis was whether there was myth uh, or those are uh, reality. Let me start with the first one. Is the tax burden low? Then, in order to avoid any uh, confusion, uh, I will jump to the conclusion. Yes, uh, particularly in personal income taxation, but the region experienced the most significant rise in overall tax burden in the world over the last 20 years or so. So there was something that the region did well in terms of increasing revenues. Today, as a percentage of GDP, the tax burden uh, represents about 17% uh, of GDP, which is at par with Asia and Africa, uh, but substantially low uh, compared to OECD countries. Given its potential of uh, economic development, uh, measure this as income per capita, uh, lag should have a, a potential increase in, in taxes uh, and in tax burden in the order of uh, three percentage point of, of GDP. So there is a, uh, a potential uh, increases in revenue given uh, the state uh, of development of the region. If we expand the measurement of uh, tax burden and include uh, social security contributions as well as uh, the proceeds from natural resources, uh, then the adjusted fiscal burdens as we define uh, increases to uh, about 25%. Uh, and this is uh, uh, still below the OECD uh, average, which is about 35%. But there are other countries in the region that are approach, approaching to the EC countries, such as Argentina, Brazil, uh, as an example. Still, the adjusted fiscal burden per capita is 10 times less than OECD average. Uh, OECD average is, is about, uh, in terms per capita per tax, is 16,000, uh, while in uh, the region uh, is about uh, 1,600. Those are the two extremes in, in that graph. Uh, 
you can see if you compare the period uh, 1994 to 2006-2010, uh, 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 the OECD, which is the left uh, bar, uh, remain more or less the same, while uh, on the right-hand side for the American, Latin American and the Caribbean region, it has increased so significantly from 18% to about 24%. So what it means is that it's a convergency uh, toward uh, OECD uh, standards. And we standardize uh, as an index of one. Uh, we see that uh, uh, on average, on the left-hand side, uh, Latin America today uh, uh, has an index of 0.87. Uh, and there are countries, such as countries in the Mercosur, as, you, as I mentioned before, that are close to the uh, OECD uh, averages. As I mentioned before, during the, 90, uh, during the, la the last 20 years, 1990 to, to uh, 2010, Latin America and the Caribbean experienced the largest increase in tax burdens in the world. Uh, and that increase uh, amounted approximately to a three percentage point of GDP uh, above of other uh, regions in the world. And that uh, took place in all the tax structure uh, in the region. Uh, personal income, corporate tax, uh, corporate income tax, and particularly value added tax uh, that moved from 4.3 uh, percentage point of GDP uh, to approximately 6.3 uh, percentage point uh, of GDP. And that also uh, was across all, all, all the countries with the exceptions of three countries which are on the lower uh, part of the of the graph, uh, Venezuela, Mexico, and Trinidad and Tobago, that happen to be oil exporting countries. All other countries uh, have made major uh, advances in terms of uh, improving uh, fiscal revenues uh, over the period from uh, 1990 to 2000 uh, and, and, and 10. And you can see uh, in the case, for example, of Argentina, uh, the increase was significant. It was about 12 percentage point of GDP. <coughs> However, uh, there is still uh, room for increases in terms of uh, tax burden. And this is a measure of, of tax burden. All uh, to the left uh, imply that I say gap that one can cover uh, through time. Uh, and that is measured in terms of GDP, uh, which are the bars, and in terms of the circular uh, point, which are include uh, uh, other structure of the economy. It's a, an econometric model in which have, is, who have determined the structure of the economy and what is the gap uh, that can be covered uh, uh, based on what the, the development of the economy is and what they can potentially achieve. And this is even more significant in, in terms of uh, the income tax uh, burden gap, uh, which is on the right hand side. So the gaps that you can see that, that can be covered uh, is significant. Uh, and particularly uh, for the case of uh, Argentina, Uruguay, uh, which are in the lower uh, part of the graph, uh, the gap that can be covered through uh, the income tax burden uh, is significant. We also compare the differences of, of uh, the tax burden and where uh, is uh, or where are the differences uh, contrasted with the OECD countries. And uh, as a summary of this is basically on uh, personal income tax. Uh, Latin America and the Caribbean uh, collect uh, on personal income tax approximately 1.4 uh, percentage point of GDP, while uh, OECD countries uh, collect eight times more uh, than, uh, than lag. Second myth of reality are taxes regressive in, in the region? And here is a, a, a maybe uh, answer. Uh, and there are significant losses uh, to avoid uh, the value of the tax regressivity uh, and uh, to promote prog progressivity uh, on personal income taxes. Those are the major finding, findings uh, in terms of uh, taxes uh, regressivity. When we measure the incidence of the value added taxes on uh, income and on consumption, and we graph uh, the effective rate, 
the red line uh, is measured against income, the incidence of VAT based on income decides. And you can see uh, the lowest portions of the income distribution, uh, the, the first or second deciles, uh, pay an average effective rate uh, significantly greater than the, uh, uh, the wealthiest of the taxpayers. When you co we compute that based on consumption, which is in fact a better approach for permanent income, uh, the regressivity uh, almost disappear. Uh, and in fact, it's slightly progressive. <coughs> so the, the myth that the value of the tax is regressive depends, therefore, on the way that you are measuring. <coughs> the value of the tax constitutes the major uh, pillar and foundations of the, uh, of the Latin American and Caribbean uh, tax system. Uh, it represents almost 60% uh, uh, of what, he collected, what is collected from taxes. And it's quite effective. Uh, and we compare uh, the productivity co against the productivity in OECD countries, and the uh, Latin American VAT productivity is a little bit higher uh, than the, uh, than the uh, OECD countries. And in fact, uh, in OECD countries, on average, uh, the value of the taxes uh, is about 80%, uh, the rate. Uh, in LAX, uh, the rate is about 15%. So it's quite uh, productive. Now, when you compute the efficiency based on consumption, uh, and the efficiency is the ratio of revenue to consumption uh, divided by the, the rate, uh, that efficiency uh, now disappears uh, in terms of uh, comparisons with the OECD country. And what is that? Uh, it happens that this, the system uh, in Latin America and the Caribbean has a lot of exemptions. And therefore, when you eliminate uh, certain consumption, uh, the effectiveness uh, and the efficiency of the taxation uh, disappear. This is also evident in terms of other exemptions. Uh, and we computed uh, the tax expenditure as a percentage of, uh, of revenue and how it is distributed across uh, the income distributions. And one extreme to the right, for example, Peru, where they have relatively low uh, tax expenditure, uh, but it benefits uh, basically to the richest part of the taxpayers. Uh, on the other hand, uh, Costa Rica, for example, has the highest ta level of tax expenditure, uh, and uh, it doesn't uh, necessarily uh, uh, target uh, to uh, the, 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 the lowest uh, part of the, of the uh, of the income distribution. This is more even evident in the case of the personal income tax, where in design uh, is uh, properly, uh, progressively designed, but in practice, uh, uh, due to three or, th or four factors that I mentioned uh, in, a, in, in, in a short while, uh, the, uh, the system uh, is an empty uh, shell. Uh, uh, based on, on, on uh, collections of income and uh, taxations, as I mentioned before, uh, is uh, equivalent to 1.4 percentage uh, point of GDP, uh, significantly lower to other countries, and particularly to OECD countries. And there are three major reasons why uh, this is the case. One is the bracket and the rate structure of the bracket. When we compare the Latin America and the Caribbean, uh, that is presented in that, in that graph, against uh, other middle income countries, the brackets and the rates are com below overall the, uh, the income uh, distribution. Uh, secondly, uh, we also uh, compare uh, tax wage for employee without children in the six deciles for uh, OECD uh, versus uh, equivalent, equivalent in Latin America. And for the sixth decile in Latin America, pay zero uh, income taxation. Uh, uh, however, in terms of social security contribution, both by employers and employees are more or less uh, equivalent. So what we have is uh, if we uh, uh, plot the average effective rate against the income uh, distributions, we have that 80% of the populations in Latin America and the Caribbean pay zero 
on, in terms of income taxation. And the very rich, the 20%, uh, riches pay on average effectively uh, 4%. Remember, I don't know if you have followed the US uh, elections, uh, Mitt Romney uh, lost the election when uh, reported that he was paying 13, 14 of uh, average effective rate uh, on income. So in Latin America, that's even uh, much uh, lower. So as a result of the poor design, generous deductions, and significant uh, evasion, uh, the progressive uh, income tax in uh, paper, on paper, uh, completely disappear in terms of uh, reality. We also uh, calculated the impact uh, of the taxes in terms of uh, changes in income distributions before and after taxes with uh, almost zero effects. So uh, in real terms, uh, income taxation have no uh, income distribution uh, impact uh, uh, in practice. Third uh, myth, is evasion large? Yes, and particularly on income taxes, is lower in value of the taxes. And this is so because it's easy to evade and risk-free. We calculated uh, the large evasion, which is another blow to uh, equality. On corporate income tax, uh, it represents almost 60% of what is the potential uh, uh, revenues that can be obtained from uh, corporate income tax. Personal income tax is about half, and value of the tax is about uh, 25%. And this is so because there is a minimum chance of being audited. In Latin America, 10% of the populations are registered taxpayers. This compared to about 70% in OECD countries. And of the 10% of registered taxpayers, only 3% only 3% annually have a chance of being audited. Of these taxpayers, only 0.2% have subject to in-depth audits. So the tax administration uh, is relatively weak, and there are significant efforts to, uh, uh, to improve. Despite that, over the last 20 years, so we have seen significant uh, changes and, and improvement. Let me try to conclude now uh, with some uh, positive aspects uh, from the reforms that have been taking place uh, over the last 20 years or so. Uh, governments have uh, implemented reform both on corporate income tax, on personal income tax, on value of the taxes, and the reforms were basically either to increase the taxable base or increase the rates. Uh, and this uh, graph represents the number of re reforms uh, uh, in, in the different areas, with significant effects on value of the tax, as uh, you have observed uh, previously. There are also significant advances on environmental taxes or, or, or environmental-related taxes, such as taxes on gasoline, for example. Uh, uh, despite these uh, advances, is some countries are doing uh, relatively well, uh, such as, for example, uh, Costa Rica and Dominican Republic, uh, uh, with taxes on gasoline and therefore internalizing some of the negative externalities of the consumption of, of gasoline. Uh, but there are, there are still uh, potential for uh, improvement. Uh, OECD countries collect on environmental or environmental related taxes. Uh, 2.5 percentage point of GDP, uh, in lack uh, that uh, amount to about uh, 1 percentage point. So there is uh, room for, uh, for improvement. Lastly, uh, it is well known that productivity is very low in informal economy. Uh, and even large economies such as Brazil, which is on the right hand uh, corner, with an informal economy as around uh, 40 percent of the total economy, uh, require uh, some changes, and changes in the tax system is one way uh, to increase uh, the possibility of advancing uh, and formalizing the economy as well as improving, uh, improving uh, productivity. 
Let me finish with uh, some essential uh, in terms of uh, policy reforms that are coming uh, out of this uh, uh, analysis. On personal income tax, uh, one of the major things uh, that the region can continue to improve is reducing minimum exempt level, uh, cap deductions progressively, and ado uh, an adopt a dual income, uh, income tax. The dual income tax basically is taxing uh, personal income as well as personal capital income differently at different rates. Uh, one of the reasons why the, person, the income taxation is low is because most of the personal capital income is exempt uh, from, uh, from taxation. Uh, rents, for example, dividends, uh, 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 interest payments uh, in most of the countries are exempt. Second, on corporate income tax, um, even though I didn't uh, go into detail, uh, but it's in the book, um, some of the aspects that had to be considered are facing out the special regimes, uh, reduce tax incentives, and uh, potentially even uh, decrease taxes in order to uh, increase the incentive for uh, savings, uh, which is in uh, the region is relatively low. Finally, on value of the taxes, uh, eliminate exemptions, unify rates, expand uh, the base. Uh, is, this is possible, uh, and we are proposing what we call it the, the P value of value of the tax, the personalized value of the tax, in which uh, you tax all consumptions and all uh, uh, consumers, and then uh, you transfer back uh, the equivalent in order to make it progressive for those uh, uh, consumers that are in the lower part of the income distribution. Uh, and finally, uh, think about uh, reducing payroll taxes, uh, because this is one of the major uh, reasons of the uh, informal uh, economy, particularly uh, in the labor market. All this uh, together will continue strengthening the tax uh, administrations and uh, fighting uh, evasion. Uh, with this, I conclude here. Thank you very much. That's very, very rich indeed, and, and exactly on the, <laughs> the 20 minutes you asked, so thank you. Um, there's a huge amount in that presentation, clearly, and that's just a, a summary of the book. Fortunately, we have three discussants to help us digest it, and then you'll have a chance to, um, um, to ask any questions. I think we're going to start um, probably you know, Francesca and then Philip and then come to Mick and sort of generally sort of starting and broadening out the discussion. Uh, we'll take about sort of five or seven minutes, three contributions, pick up a few questions, pick some more from the floor and then come back to Vicente for any, any clarifications or further points. Sure. Thank you. Francesca. Thank you.